Kentucky. Good morning. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. There will be a baby shower this afternoon at 2 o'clock for Lexi Warner. And as you know, the, we will have a church conference here in the sanctuary at 4 o'clock. Um, on the Monday the 23rd, the, the, the witness team will meet and the staff parish uh, committee will meet after that. Uh, the witness team will meet at 530 and the, and the staff parish will meet at 630. Bible study on Wednesday and Monday, January the, th- the 30th is administrative council. Who's already told this month? I'm telling you. Don't forget to bring your uh, prayer cards um, uh, to the altar um, during the, uh, the opening hymn, if I can put, get it out. Any other announcements? All right. Speak now, forever hold your peace. Let's sing. Good morning. If you will, take your United Methodist hymnal and open hymn number 454, Open My Eyes That I May See. We'll sing all verses of hymn 454 in the United Methodist hymnal. share praises and concerns this morning. I wonder who has a praise that they'd like to lift up to the Lord. And it's good to see you back. And I praise God again that Miss Mary is up here in the choir again. Hallelujah. Ah, she's a spunky lady, isn't she? And um, we're grateful for her and for all of you. Uh, I'm grateful to see each one this morning and pray God's blessings upon each one. Others, 
We do want to lift up Helen very much in our prayers. Um, uh, also, Mary and her son John Chapinski. Um, and um, they're both devastated, and, but we, we don't know what all God has in store yet. But we do need to pray for them very much in prayer. Others? Do keep all of our, the, the people and, and the names in our bulletin in your hearts and minds and your prayers. Um, and um, also, um, I, I know you've been praying and praying and praying about this uh, church conference this afternoon. And I ask that you continue to pray about that. And, and, um, uh, and I want to say a little more about that later. But um, uh, others. And spoken request by uplift of hands. Let us pray. Well, let's sing first. You may remain seated, but if you'll turn in the faith we sing at 2193 as we prepare for prayer. Lord, listen to your children praying. 2193 in the faith we sing. We'll sing through this twice. I am so grateful, Lord, that, that you hear, hear your children. Father, you are the great I am. You are the creator of all there is. You know the hearts of every soul in this building. You know their desires. You know their wants, their wishes. You know how we cry out to you. But we do pray, Lord, that you would send your spirit, your love. Send us your power. Lord, may we love as Christ loved. May we seek as Christ sought to do your will. That Lord, the very words we speak may be what Jesus told the people then. I come to do my Father's will. I speak my Father's words. The Holy Spirit still leads us in that way. Lord, we want to be what the Spirit wants us to be. What you desire of us. And truly, Lord, we want to praise you and glorify your name, to lift you up because you are the great I am, and there is none greater than you. Lord, we know you are the great I am, and yet in our hearts of hearts, there are times that we, our hearts are baffled, sad, questioning, trying to grasp understanding. 
And above all, we are trying to seek your will. To be led by the Spirit. Lord, lead us in the paths of righteousness for your name's sake. Pour out your Spirit. Pour out your healing grace, Lord, upon Betty Rasnick and upon Doug. Upon Don Hammond's family and, and upon the family of Kathy Tabor. Upon Mary and John Chapinski, upon Helen this morning, surround her with your spirit, with your light, and your arms of grace and mercy. For Dean and Nancy, our nation, our church, Lord, for each other. Lord, we've often, I've often said, I love to see the days when. A revival would sweep out like it used to, sweep through this nation, sweep through this community, to once again see souls lying the altar rail, crying out to you for forgiveness of sins, crying out to you for forgiveness of, and, and to, that you would just forgive them and, and bring them into your family of souls crying out for loved ones, for family that are lost, family that are sick, families that are, are unconcerned. Lord, when families and people would just gather around the altar to seek your will and just cry out, Lord, lead us, lead our church, lead our nation, lead us. Oh, Lord God, I pray that we would come back to that, that we would come to you joining around the altar, crying out. In our prayer closets, crying out. For the Holy Spirit to sweep through. Be in our midst this morning, Lord. I pray your will be done. I pray your Spirit's moving. I pray all that is said and done will be pleasing in your sight. Hide us, all of us, behind the cross, and that Christ would be foremost. Hide me that the words I say would be what you would have to be said. Oh, Lord God, as much as our heart cries out for the sick and the afflicted, for the imprisoned, for the widow, the orphan, for those in the hospital, those battling cancer and COVID and many other diseases, our hearts cries out for the salvation of souls and for your spirit to, run, to abound mightily within your church and that a revival would sweep out. Lord, we ask this, that we may be in your will and your purpose. Now teach us to pray as Jesus taught the disciples by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen and amen.
Y'all got with it. <laughs> Did they not do good? Amen. I want to look at a passage of Scripture out of 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 4 and um, first 12 verses. I also want you to put your finger in Matthew 26. Um, and uh, I want to close the sermon this, this morning with Matthew 26. So um, I pray that you would just uh, um, put your fingers there and, and um, pray. Amen? Pray. And that's, let us pray right now. God of grace and God of wonder, almighty and powerful, all-knowing God, anoint these, my sisters and brothers, with your spirit, anoint me, that I may read rightly, divine rightly, and preach rightly, and that all of us may hear rightly, to your glory and to your honor. In the name of Christ we pray, amen and amen. As you are able, would you stand for the reading of God's word? It's funny, this morning as I was going over this and, and, and uh, I kept reading and reading and reading, and I said, that doesn't make a bit of sense. Well, it was because I was in 1 Corinthians and not 2 Corinthians. Well, so I, I mark it, say in 2 Corinthians, I marked it before I left the house. And I sat down over here and I started reading and I said, that doesn't make a bit of sense. I'm still in 1 Corinthians, so maybe I should be preaching out of 1 Corinthians, but no. Uh, Therefore, since through God's mercy we have this ministry, we do not lose heart. Rather, we have renounced secret and shameful ways. We do not use deception, nor do we distort the Word of God. On the contrary, by setting forth the truth plainly, we commend ourselves to everyone's conscience in the sight of God. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. 
The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For what we preach is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as your servant for Jesus' sake. For God, who said, let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. But we have this treasure. I love this. This is one of my favorite passages of scriptures. We have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. We are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. For we who are alive are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake so that his life may also be revealed in our mortal body. So then death is at work in us, but life is at work in you. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Several years ago, I was at a Charlie Daniels concert. Yeah, at uh, and we were at a uh, we were at a hunting expo, and um, we were outside, and it was in the outside venue at an old railroad station, and uh, sadly, it was right next to the uh, train tracks that were active. Now the highlighter, uh, the highliner of, of Charlie Daniels was. Uh, uh, was well known as as well years ago in in uh, in the eighties, and um, I wasn't overly impressed with him. And to be uh, truthful, I was becoming very very discouraged at the whole concert uh, because I didn't like uh, I didn't care for his actions, I didn't care for his words, especially with children and and it being a family event. And uh, so, when uh, by the time he finished, I was feeling kind of down about that. And then Charlie Daniels came on, and he began to sing, and he, boy, he perked everybody up, and he was singing, and almost three-fourths of the way through the concert, he just stopped. And he said, this week I sat down one evening before the TV, and I thought I'd watch a little TV. He said, as I turned it on, it was the wrong time to watch TV. Well, I was thinking, what in the world was he watching? And he said, what I turned on was the news. And he said, you know what? All I heard was bad news, bad news, bad news, and bad news. <coughs> and more bad news. And he said, most of the time, that's all we hear is bad news. It kind of reminded me of the episode in Andy Griffith where Opie and his little friend was putting out their newspaper. And when they wrote the good news, nobody wanted to read it. But when they, when they printed all the gossip that was being said in the town, everybody was, uh, was scarfing it up. Got <clears throat> Andy and Aunt B in trouble. But, uh, and, and then Andy learned that there was a, a whole other page, a whole other newspaper. And, he's, and he just freaked out. And... Uh, and he told him, he said, I don't want you all printing any more of this. He said, but that's what everybody said. And he said, but I want you to print, tell the good little stories about your school and everything. And he said, Papa, when we printed all the good stuff, nobody wanted to read it. But when we printed this, everybody wanted to read it. Charlie Daniels said, bad news, bad news, bad news. And then he said, but I have good news for you. Jesus Christ is alive and still on the throne, <coughs> sitting at the right hand of the Father. And with that, he launched into how great thou art. And for the rest of the concert, he sang nothing but gospel hymns. And let me tell you what, that place was rocking. The Spirit of God fell, and I'm saying it was awesome. And I forgot about the, the, the other performer because Jesus showed up. Amen. 
But isn't it true that we're faced with a lot of bad news every day? Bad news, bad news, bad news. Troublesome times. Amen. Paul speaks of trials and tribulations to a people who had experienced bad news. He speaks of the troubles that he too had experienced. And Paul tells his readers, do not despair. You know how hard that is, do not despair? Oftentimes, there's, because of what happens, their hearts become down and out. He says, do not despair. For there is good news in Jesus Christ. Therefore, having this ministry by the mercy of God, we do not lose heart. And I want to say to you today, do not lose heart. But how do you not lose heart? With all that's going on around us, how do we not lose heart? You know, this week alone, I don't know about you, I I know in my own personal life there were so many disheartening news. When I think about Larry, when I think about John Chapinski, even that little lady who was 103 years old that I did her funeral, it was still disheartening for their family. And it just seems like one thing right after another. And, and folks, the things that happens within the world can leave us disheartened. Because who isn't tired of hearing about bad news every day? Bad news of the economy. Bad news about uh, inflation rates. Bad news about gas prices. Who hasn't experienced or heard of empty shelves in the grocery store? Who hasn't heard of another police uh, uh, shooting or another suicide or another bombing? More domestic violence uh, and, and more child abuse. Who doesn't become disheartened on hearing about another loved one being diagnosed with cancer or some other disease? Who doesn't become dismayed and discouraged of hearing about and dealing with persecutions and trials? Even among the church. We've been in a process. And this process didn't happen just four or five months ago. It's been ongoing. It's been years coming on and leaves us discouraged. No matter what, no matter how you think about it or what you think about it, 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 it still is there. And it permeates our existence. It permeates our conversations, even the church. Even the church. We can't escape. But I want to say to you, brothers and sisters, do not lose heart. Even when the church, as it is right now, is standing on the precipice of a challenge that we have never faced before, before, do not lose heart because I'm like Charlie Daniels. Jesus Christ is still on the throne. He sits beside the Father making intercessions for us, and he is coming back for us one day. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to hear also what Paul said. Paul refuses to be swayed from the truth of God's word. Brothers and sisters, do not be swayed from the truth of God's word. Amen. That's why, brothers and sisters, we need to be in this word and know this word. As the old preacher said one time, I I got so tickled at it and I've heard it other times. He said, you need to know it from kiver to kiver. We do need to know it from kiver to kiver. To hide it in our hearts that we will not sin against God. Paul says he's going to be, remain faithful. And he says, but we have renounced this graceful and underhanded ways. We refuse to practice cunning or to tamper with God's word. Amen. But by the open statement of the truth, we would commend ourselves to everyone's conscience in the sight of God. Folks. We need to submit our conscience in the sight of God. And even if our gospel is veiled, he said, it is veiled only to those who are perishing. Folks, their eyes are to be opened 
to the truth of God. God's word is not veiled to us. As it was, you know, when Moses came down off of Mount Sinai and the people couldn't bear to see Moses because of the, uh, he was in the presence of God and that light that illuminated him, it was blinding him and, and so he had to put a veil over his eyes. The veil remained there. There was still a shadow of the, even with the Ten Commandments, all the laws that God gave, all that God told them to do and as they were uh, um, moving forward, but there was still a veil in the, uh, before the Holy of Holies. No one could just automatically go before the presence of God. We get to go to the very presence of God every day, every minute of the hour. Amen. The gospel is not veiled to us. And I pray that God would just reveal his word to us in powerful and exciting ways. Amen. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For what we proclaim is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord with ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. Folks, one of the reasons I always pray before I even read is because I'm human. I'm of the flesh. And I can make mistakes. I cannot even preach rightly. But I pray that what happens in this time and this moment that God would reveal and God would put the words there. Have you ever just been talking to someone or in a Bible study and all of a sudden, you know, you come out with something and you say, where'd that come from? What well, come from the Holy Spirit, amen? God wants to reveal himself and his word through us. For God who said, let light shine out of darkness has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. For season, God has allowed the prince of darkness to be in this world, and we as humans have allowed it to dominate the present age. God has given us, all of us humans, free will to choose or reject or accept Jesus Christ. We have the free will to follow God today or not follow God. We have the free will to listen to Jesus or not listen to Jesus. We have the free will to allow the Holy Spirit to, to move within our lives and lead us and guide us and direct us and, and interpret the word for us. We have the free will to, to pray or not to pray. Amen? But I pray that we allow it to happen. The one who came to draw back the veil of darkness and reveal the true light May he reveal himself in us. You know, when Christ died on the cross of Calvary, that veil was removed from us. I love it when that veil was rent. And the holies of holies was revealed, giving us direct access to the throne of grace. And we are encouraged to go to the throne of grace often. Verse 7, Paul says, but we have this treasure of jars and clay to show that the surpassing power belongs to God and not to us. You know what? God, through Jesus, has given us a new covenant of his redeeming grace, of his glory. It's a treasure. Salvation is a treasure. Eternal life is a treasure. And this grand treasure is housed in menial, frail, inept, broken container. That's us. Folks, I'm broken. You're broken. We're only whole because of Jesus Christ. We can only be made whole and put back together because of the potter, God the Father, who molds us and makes us after Christ's will. Amen? to follow in his footsteps, to be led by the Holy Spirit. Paul said, we are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair. Folks, sometimes it's hard to get up out of the darkness. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying in the body the death of Jesus. You know what that means? 
we have been crucified to the old life. The old nature of us is gone. When we accepted Christ as our Savior, when we were baptized, that was gone. That old nature. And we became a new creation in Christ Jesus. And although we're breakable, we're fallible, God still chooses to put his grand treasure, salvation, his gospel into us. And we carry the life of Jesus to be manifested in our bodies. And so even though death is at work in us, but life is in you. Now, Paul began this message by proclaiming, do not lose heart. And here's why Paul is telling them not to lose heart. It's because of that treasure, the light that is within us. That no matter what we're faced with, no matter what we become discouraged about, no matter what we are dismayed about, no matter what we're perplexed about, no matter what we're downhearted about, we have the light of Christ in us. We have that treasure of the gospel housed in us. We have the glory of God and the light of Christ housed in us. That Holy Spirit has been given to us to dwell within us, to lead us and guide us and direct us. Salvation, my friends, is entirely the work of Christ. It's not my doing. It's not your doing. It's entirely the work of Christ. He died on the cross of Calvary. He rose from the grave and he ascended to the Father and now makes intercessions for us. The treasure and this light of Christ has been placed in each of us to shine into the veiled darkness that others might believe in him. Those that are discouraged, those who are downtrodden, those who have no hope, those who the light of Christ is veiled to, it is through us that the light of Christ shines, that they may know Jesus. Brothers and sisters, like you, my heart at times becomes discouraged, it becomes dismayed. Sometimes, I, you know, with all of the things that are being said, and I'm, I'm going to say, and this week it was dismayed. Um, my heart was broke at times. And yet, I'm not, I do not lose heart because of who lives within me and who lives within you. I know that the vote, this vote that is, that is to happen today, has many of you anxious, maybe discouraged, maybe there is a, a hint of fear doubt about the, uh, the outcome, but I want to share something with you, that, uh, the thing that I want, also want to point out this morning to help us not to lose heart. Jesus often taught about prayer. He talked about prayer. He often went aside to pray. I think it, when he did so, it was to just have a, a wonderful conversation with his father, but also, Father, guide me, lead me. Father, how do I teach? And I'm sure that there were times that all that, that happened to him and when he was persecuted and tried, that he needed to go to the Father. Because although he was divine, he was also human, and he needed that encouragement. Jesus taught prayer. We pray a prayer that Jesus taught his disciples every Sunday. And you may pray it during the week many, many times. But I want you to go to Matthew 26, 39. And I want you to just look at that because I'm going to refer to that. Jesus has celebrated the Passover meal where he has revealed that he is the bread and the cup of salvation. He is the Passover. He celebrated that meal, but he also tells them, this is my body that is broken for, me, for you. And this is my blood that is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Then he goes to the Garden of Gethsemane where he takes Peter, James, and John with him. 
And he tells him to pray. And then he goes a little farther and he begins to pray. And this is what he prays. My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me. Yet not as I will, but as you will. I'd rather not go through this. I'd rather not have this trial given to me. I'd rather not have this cup. Because Jesus knew what faced him. And he came into the world for this purpose, that he would take unto himself the sin of the world. That we could be forgiven. That we could live a life in Christ Jesus. And that we could go to heaven and have eternal life and live with him and with the Father. I'd rather not go through this. I would rather... Not, but this is not my decision, Father. It's not my purpose. It's your will. And I will succumb to your will gladly. Folks, may that be our prayer today. We need to pray that today. I don't know, always know, I'm not sure if I ever know, but I, want to know the perfect will of God. Amen? I want to follow the perfect will of God. I know I want certain things and things to happen a certain way. But is it God's will? And I want God's will to be done. So I'm going to ask you this morning. And I want to say this. Whatever the outcome is, I will glorify your name. I don't care what it is. God, I'm going to praise you. I'm going to glorify your name. Because nothing has changed with you. You're still the great I am. You're still the creator. You can destroy mountains. You can raise up mountains. You can destroy the earth. And you could create a whole new earth. There is nothing impossible with you, God. But, Lord, I pray in your holy name to abide in us and we, in, that we would abide in you. And through all things, especially when we are discouraged and dismayed, especially when we're in doubt, especially when we're not sure of the answer, especially when we're seeking and searching, when the world seems to be closing in upon us, our troubles and trials are upon us. When there are troublesome times, Lord God, I pray to you for your will to be done and that the light of Christ would shine in me, that I would not lose heart, but always, always, always trust in you. This morning, as we sing our hymn of invitation, I'm going to ask you to do something this morning because I'm going to tell you what, and I'm going to be very truthful with you. There are times that my heart is discouraged, my heart is dismayed. There are times that I seek a direction. And I want to know the perfect will of God, and I want to know where God is leading, but I don't want to lose heart, and I don't want us to lose heart. I want the light of Christ to shine brightly. I want this church to be the most awesome God soul saving place in Richlands. Amen. That whenever we walk through these doors that the Holy Spirit hits us wide open. Amen. I love it. And however God wants to do However God wants to orchestrate the, the worship service, however God wants to orchestrate our fellowship time, that, but God, your will be done, and may we not lose heart in anything. And in all things, to glorify you, to praise you, who will one day split the eastern sky, amen, and take us home. So this morning as we stand to sing, I want you to, to come and say, God, you know I get discouraged. I get dismayed. I'm not sure about this vote today. I don't know 
But I do know this. I want you to lead my heart. Because, folks, let me tell you what. We can lead our heart astray. Amen? I can lead my heart astray. My mind can allow my heart to be led astray. But God, do not let us be led astray. But, Lord, lead us by your Spirit and not my will, but your will be done. So as we stand and sing, I'm going to invite you to come and to pray a prayer. Why did I ask you to come? I just think there's something. I'm like Billy Graham. I, I just think there's something about making that commitment to, to step forward. That I'm, I'm coming to meet you, Lord, where you are. I want to meet you at your throne of grace. And so I'm going to ask you to do that as we stand and sing. I'm going to say this too. Sandra, if you need to leave that, that organ, then do so. If you need to leave it and, and, and from leading, then do so. I'm asking us to lay it all on the line for God this morning, that we do not lose heart, that we be not discouraged, that we allow the, the light of Christ to always shine in us, and the Father's will be done as we stand and sing. This morning you will find the... Insert in your, in your bulletin for Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. We'll sing all verses of Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. It's in your bulletin.
Father God, oh, you are so worthy of all of our praise. And how can we not praise you and glorify you? You're so worthy. I just thank you, Lord, as we turn our eyes upon you, the things of the world become dimmer and dimmer and dimmer, and the light of Christ just keeps shining brighter and brighter. Always shining us, Lord. May we be willing vessels to allow that light to shine in and through and out to the world. Bless my sisters and brothers. Bless them today. Bless them throughout this day. Decisions that will be made. Bless their giving. Giving of their time, their presence, their prayers, their service, their tithes and offerings. Bless our time. Always. And send us forth now in your love and in your grace. Oh Lord, that we might be the light of the world. The light to the world. And do not lose heart. It's the name of Christ we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Go in God's love and grace.